So this week we've seen an interesting set of presentations from people who make hybrid storage systems and from people who make flash caching solutions for the server side. You know, it's pretty sure to me that for most people, there's some, the future of storage is some kind of combination of spinning disks and flash. But where do you guys feel the flash belongs? Is it in the storage array, in a hybrid system? Is it in the server? Is it some of each? Do we do read caching in one place and write caching in another? What do you think? Well, my first thought is that it depends. And potentially it depends on, on, on the size of the company. Because if you are a very small company, potentially hybrid storage is more than enough. Because it's fast, it's faster than your traditional array and uh, it's a step forward. But really, if you need a real performance, so you, you want more cache <coughs> and you want the cache near to the application, close to the application. This is my first thought. And I think that many of the hybrid uh, storage vendors now uh, targeting SMB, indeed. So potentially this is the why they are there, because it's easier for them to sell uh, to this kind of company. Well, SMBs are also a lot more open to buying from startups. It, it, it's really hard to be an enterprise targeted startup that competes in any way with the established vendors. Yes, but we, we saw Panic's data and they targeting the enterprise. Right. And really, they, they, they shown up uh, big performances and very low latencies that are uh, what our big customers are asking today. Right. So, uh, and, and this is disruptive because, uh, yeah, it's very transparent to the VMware user, okay? But it changes totally the, the model. Does have the a lot of potential to be a game changer to, to say I can go to Pernix Data or FlashSoft or any of the other companies that you know will be in that market in the next year or so to get my performance and just go to EMC to get my capacity. That's you know, that's a concept that the guys must keep the guys at EMC up late at night. Yeah, especially if I mean you can just pull out you know it does if Pernix isn't running it's not going to you know totally ruin your your current VMware setup, so, um, and I don't know how the, the other ones work um, that way, but it's not like you're gonna lose your data or or even have downtime, so it's it's easier to go with that if you go with, you know, a bigger player, like you said, for your capacity, and, and then do flash at the server level. Yeah, let's say the, the server level flash offers a unique opportunity if you're in an environment where you want to perhaps extend the life of your array. You, you could be presented with a shift where you decide to get more money out of that opportunity or that investment by putting server-side flash. And I might almost go, you know, kind of playing devil's advocate in my own, my own mind, to say that it may become a standard just to have servers that ship with some quantity of flash. Uh, and basically, it's not a question of, are we going to use flash on the server, but what performance tier will it be served at? Is it a card? Is it an SSD? and how much, how much capacity will it have? My opinion on that. So then it's also a good one for the SMB then? Yeah, I mean, well, if you look at, uh, even Blade Technologies can, uh, can kind of uh, take advantage of the flash story. I think all of them have the ability to ship with uh, SSDs in, in some way, shape, or form, typically two of them. Uh, for an SMB, you know, you can get a rack mount server and, and very easily buy some consumer grade uh, flash disks. <laughs> relatively cheap. Yeah. I mean, even in, let's, let's just take the example of my home lab, right? Uh, for 80 bucks, I bought 120 gigs of flash capacity for each server. And uh, I think total investment was like $300. And I'm seeing a pretty dramatic improvement in. It's, a not, it's not a realistic environment, I understand that. But for relatively cheap, I've dramatically increased my performance uh, using just consumer grade stuff that I bought off Amazon. So if you're an SMB and you are okay with that kind of stuff and you just wanna buy an extra flash drive and utilize that, I think it's a great story to tell.
potentially the next generation of uh, every kind of uh, standard server will have uh, SSD inside uh, or potentially they will be drives uh, uh, connect directly connected to the PCI. So the new standards like uh, SCSI Express and so on will be implemented in. Yeah, I'm, so I'm really looking forward to the next generation of servers with two and a half inch slots that are both SAS and PCIe slots. So I can put a PCIe SSD in it or a disk drive. Ultimately, I'd like to be able to put my Ethernet and fiber channel cards in the front too and never have to go to the hot aisle. But mm -hmm. that's a design choice the server vendors are going to have to make for us. So to your original point, being kind of the newbie here, um, who, why would you go with you know flash on on the array side, or or the hybrid storage, or um, or or maybe even specifically, which flavor would you use? Isn't it dependent on the workload? Maybe from the application, because we saw some great IOPS with those flash cards. So why investing in uh, a lot of uh, disks or uh, solid state disks instead of? Uh, Cards. You also may be on just the refresh cycle where your compute is fine mm -hmm. uh, and you're, you're up for an array refresh cycle and it just makes sense to go something smaller, leaner, less power consumption, less heat uh, that, that utilizes flash so you're, you're shrinking down your, your footprint. Uh, the compute, you're happy with it. Yeah, yeah. If, if you've got an old EVA with four trays of 15K <laughs> RPM drives right. and you can replace that with a 3U device that's got 7,200 RPM drives and flash, mm -hmm. then you're going to do that. Um, the interesting thing is if you've got that old EVA and there's another two years to go on its lease, then server-side flash as a Band-Aid makes a huge amount of sense. It's, but there's, there's a, a point where spending five to $15,000 per server to speed the servers up versus spending $100,000 for a faster array, you know, at some point you got to go, well, which am I going to do? Now, if you need a million IOPS, you might go server side. Mm -hmm. Or both. Or, <clears throat> or some combination, yeah. And, and then, it start, then we start getting into, well, and in, the, in the best of all possible worlds, there'll be some method of coordination between the array and the server side about who caches what so that we don't have the same data in multiple caches at multiple layers. And I think and on the flip side, we, we are always talking about VMware and potentially Hyperboot, Microsoft, but really many companies are, are still running on Unix and uh, other kind of stuff. So potentially the, the, uh, the server side uh, cache in, in all those cases doesn't work. So you need a very strong uh, hybrid or full flash uh, uh, array because you can change applications. If you have uh, a COBOL uh, application written 30 years ago, yeah. it's quite difficult to, to tune in <laughs> <laughs> to get uh, something new. So potentially, uh, it's a mix. Mm -hmm. So new technology, uh, like virtualization, it's easy to implement cache inside or yeah, all, all the kind of stuff that runs on x86 servers, it's easy. On the other side, all the legacy needs legacy array or legacy approach. Right, <coughs> it needs something that's, that's external to that device because we can't make changes internally to it. Okay. One, um, one, that, sorry, one server starts to come with SSDs and then wouldn't that sort of commoditize the entire, you know, all this, all this innovation that's around it? And uh, because, you know, it's there, it comes with it. Everybody has it. They're going to be implementing schemes that sort of work for their, for the OEM's business model. How do these guys survive or how do you sort of uh, plan for, for not, not having, you know, your, investment become obsolete, you know, right away. Really, I think that there are some important innovation uh, that some kind of uh, guys like Fusion IO, Fusion IO, yeah, 
has a great product potentially, <laughs> but they have a lot of software on top of it. So uh, the other side is not so important. Potentially, it will be less important in the future to be very commodity. So there are the, uh, the guys that are doing the, the best stuff today are the guys that are developing software on top of their the how to yeah how to access the data how to manage the metadata how to cache the the data and so on so potentially uh, there are companies that will continue to do well also if the SSD will be Remember, the servers have been coming with disk drives as long as we've had servers. Didn't stop EMC from innovating on the storage side. You know, there's, you only get, get to go so far with what comes with the server. And the other thing we all have to consider is while write back caching on the server side is really cool and can give you a lot of performance, there's a lot of moving parts. Yeah, yeah you need a high performance, low latency yeah. network so that you can cluster the performance, cluster the the SSDs, you know, that's not a Band-Aid solution. You have to decide to build not just the storage, but the storage, the server, the network infrastructure, all to support that. So the other thing I wanted to bring up, we were talking about server side and array side. I also think, I think there's a good use case where you could do both and achieve, uh, basically you have multiple tools in your belt being, let's say you've got a standard virtualization environment uh, where everything can kind of take advantage of a flash hybrid array or uh, an all flash array. On top of that, you may have a specific set of hosts and workloads that are tuned for, you know, tier one SQL, tier one Oracle, where not only do they need the performance that the array can provide, they could actually use that lower latency million IOP kind of scenario where you've got a specific cluster that has unique hardware with the server side caching, uh, as well as tying back to an array that also has flash at some point. I think you could use both and, and monopolize on it. Yeah, in well, that kind of environment, I'd like to see us get to the point where I can assign write caching to the array. Mm. They say all of you, the flash in the array should be a write cache because the servers have read caches. And now the coherency problem goes away because it's all sure. in one place. And when I do failovers, I don't have to. As long as the latency would be. Reasonable. Yeah. <clears throat> Following on what Chris was saying and your introduction about the tiering or going hybrid, I think that we are going to use all of these tier or layers, as you want to call it, because it's an efficient way to map every single workload to the best storage you can use for it, regarding both the price per gigabyte, so you can go to slow and huge disks. And that's, for example, the reason why uh, the reason why tape is not going to go away. On the backup? Not, not yet, but uh, maybe eventually. For many years. <laughs> <laughs> or the price per IO, right. if you need performances. So we are going to see all these kind of tiers working together. And maybe one evolution would be uh, the same system that can manage at the same time the server side flash and the array side flash and moving the workloads between these tiers in a transparent way. Yeah, that, that dream of coordination. Yeah, because they, actually they're coming from two <clears throat> different pro vendors, this kind of technology. Right, and that, that could be a vendor that can do both that might be and the offer it as a unique solution. Yeah, that might be the advantage that a Dell and HP or an EMC can bring is that they can have their server-side product coordinate with the array. All right, I think that's a good place to leave this discussion for now. So thank you guys for joining, talking about Flash and caching and where Flash should live.